Okay, so speedometer is not working. Oh my gosh. Maybe she's got to learn, but nope. I'm having the same problem. Yep. Nope, this one's not working at all. Well, the piece we're looking for is up underneath this heat shield. Probably part of the reason why it goes bad is it's got a heat shield. So it means it gets hot in that area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two bolts out. I could have taken these out, but there seems to be a little tab coming off of this that sticks up through the heat shield to keep it from coming off. So I'm just going to take this whole bracket off and slide it back and or take it off. So I'm assuming these come off without breaking. Oh, look at that. Woohoo! Well, oh, that's got a nut, I think, on the back. It does. The other one, I guess, is one of those nuts that has a little doohickey on the back side, but I can still get a wrench up in there and hold that still. So hang tight, let me get a wrench, and we'll go from there. Well, I've got a 14 millimeter on there. It's probably supposed to be 9 16ths, but that works just fine. Let's see if we can get it off. Oh, with ease. Uh oh. Except for I dropped it into the abyss. <sighs> Always. What you can't see is once you drop this up in here, there's a couple of bolts that I believe they're 7 16 Can almost not get to them, so I gotta snake my ratchet up in here, get it on the bolts, and. Well, find the bolts first. There we go. It's looking with your hands kind of stuff. And then just... But my guess is that you have to, have to, have to have this heat shield. Alrighty. Or you're going to end up toasting your new your new sensor. So anyway, there it is. Now I can 
kind of get this out of here. Sort of, kind of a little bit, but not really. There we go. Just kind of slide it back. And right here, even though you can't see it, I'll have to re-finagle the camera. But right here is the... Uh, well, maybe you can see... Nope, you can't really see it. Well, can you? Nope, nope. All right, well, anyway, let me finagle the camera. What the heck is that? Whatever. All right, and then you can see what I'm doing. And there is the old sensor. And out with the old, in with the new. Ew, I got dirty. I've discovered that it's impossible to get my camera up in here to show you this while I do it. So I'm going to simply show you. This is it right here. This is the connector right here. This is what I'm taking out. And this is the bolt that I have to take out to pop it out. Now I'll show you the new piece. This is the new piece, and obviously that's where the bolt goes. This fits inside the transmission, and this little seal here just fits inside that hole. So I'm just going to pull the nut out, the bolt I showed you goes right here, and then this will just pop right out, okay? It just, just pops in there past this seal. Once you feel the seal connect, just put the bolt in, tighten it down, and then we plug her in, and that's going to be all there is to it. So I'm, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. But you are not going to be able to see this part. I just have tried everything to get the camera to show you, and I can get a vague picture of it, and that's about it. You gotta love American cars in this generation because some of it is metric. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this connector off. That came off rather easy. There's oil all over it, so that's that's always good for it. You know, when you see a bunch of oil in your connector, that's that's just fantastic. No, I'm kidding. That's not good. So that's probably why it went bad. It got oil soaked. Don't ask me where the oil is coming from. Maybe through the sensor itself. Uh, it Maybe defective. Well, obviously we know it's defective. But uh, I'm going to come up in here with my trusty ratchet. Oh, I should have went with a deep socket. Let's see if we can do it with this one. Let's see if I can get that out of there. Yep. It is a 10 millimeter. The other two bolts I took out were 7 16ths, which they might have been 11 mil, but... Alright, so I pulled that out. Oh, what was that? Oh my. There's a spacer. Well, just to show you, there's this little spacer here that was between... If you look at the bolt, the spacer went here. Okay. And that, I guess, to space this off for whatever reason... Oh yeah, because that's kind of fat. Ah, you know, who knows? 80s technology, right? So now we're just going to work this out. Hopefully, maybe I ought to go get a, a drip pan because I got a funny feeling we're going to get a bath. So let me go get a oil can just to catch some of this if it falls out. Drips out, whatever the word. You know what I mean. I've got a screwed up driver and I'm going to try to get it inside of here and gently pry on this to get it out of here. If I can, we don't want to booger up nothing. Oh my my my! It's not going to cooperate very well here. Yep 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 yep. Let's see if I can get over here, get up underneath it. Yep. She's been in there a day or two. Ugh. Well, where's my light? That bugger is. Been in there a while. Well, hmm. Maybe give it a little tappity tap. We definitely don't want to break it. Well, actually, we don't care. We break this one, but we don't want to break what's inside of it. So I'm going to give it a little tap tap and see what happens. Oh my. Well, if it's not broken, it is now. 
I just actually drove the screwdriver right through the side of it. How crazy is that? Man. It's an aluminum case on this one. She's going to have to keep tapping. She's a coming, though. Oh, no. That's not good. It looks like... The it's actually breaking in half. They did say that was a common problem with these, that they will... Oh, now my light doesn't work. Come on, here we go. Unbelievable. Well, that fluid doesn't look that good either. Well, I'm going to try a different way and see if I can't maybe spin it out, because it looks like it's wedged in there pretty darn good. And I don't feel like having to take this exhaust out, but that may be what it comes to. So I'm going to try to get a pair of pliers on there and see if I can't get her to spin. But it looks like it's breaking in two on me. Because the old ones are two pieces, the new ones are one. And they said that was a common problem that these would break. But judging by the fact that this got fluid in it, uh, I'd say that that's what was going on. Well, it broke in two. This is the piece. So now I gotta try to get the other piece out. So good luck with that. Why can nothing go easy for me? This thing has just fallen apart, literally fighting me every inch of the way. I had to drop the exhaust because I'm gonna have to get in there with some kind of vice grip slash pipe branch slash something something gonna have to get in there with something that i can clamp onto this thing with and try to spin it oh golly sergeant carter so i don't know i'm not really sure i got the exhaust out of the way but this is going to be I've already busted this up trying to get it out. You can see that it's two pieces and that it's got to go in, come pull out of here, but trying not to break on any of this because then I'm screwed. We'll be looking for a new tail shaft. So I'm not sure what to do. I've got vice grips and we're going to see if I can't get that to work loose. It should just be a rubber seal in there, but it's probably been in there a day or two. And uh, she's just going to fight me every inch of the way. I can get this, you know, on there. And I don't know. I'll let you guys watch for a few minutes and see if I get anywhere. Uh-oh, that's all my vice grip has, so. Oh, I need a bigger one. Aye, aye, aye. We'll keep trying. Well, we're going to try a pipe wrench. <laughs> get a pipe wrench in there. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay. Well, we got her to spin. Now we got to get her to come out. <laughs> All right. We got that done. Come on, baby. This one's not quite giving me the leverage I need. It's coming, but it's not coming easy. Oh, let's see. I've got another pair of channel locks here. They're kind of crappy ones. When it comes to channel locks, buying cheap ones is definitely not advantageous. Heavens to Murgatroyd, Batman. Whew. Okay. Let's try peck and tap again, see if that helps. Oh, there we go. Woohoo! There we go. It's moving. I don't 
going past the seal. So, hopefully, I should be able to just grab a hold of this bad boy and pull it out at this point. Nope. Gonna have to keep pecking at it. Because I got a cockeyed in there now. been so happy to see something come out. It's a bit of a fiasco having to drop the exhaust and everything, but there's no way I would have got those that pipe wrench in there with the exhaust on it. Oh, so the only good thing about this is now you all can kind of see what was going on because you can you can see this, right? You know, I mean, that's see if I can zoom in on it. But yeah, you can see it now. So that's the only good thing about getting the exhaust out of the way is it allows you to see this whole thing. But man, I was really working on that to try to get it out. And I was cur I was starting to doubt that it's supposed to come out. But uh, it did. And this is what it looks like. And this is what was, whoops, sometimes the camera's tricky. And this is with the seal that it was around it. Oh, it's, I'm such an idiot. Okay, there we go. See the seal? This thing was in there, let me tell you. But we got it out now. And we're going to hopefully put the other one in without issue, right? Right. Everybody agree. Say yes, no issues. Woo! Okay, I hope you're right. Uh, here's the other thing, is this is not the correct one. And you can tell by looking at it, because it's different. But, I'm just going to test fit it for the moment, just to see. Can you see when I'm up in here? No, probably. Oh yeah, I guess you can, okay. Because it's up there, but does it go in? Yes, it will. Okay, I've got to find the oh my. Uh oh, wait a minute, there's something else in there. Is this supposed to come out too? I'm gonna say that's not supposed to come out because <laughs> that would be the gear that it, it runs on, so that's not supposed to come out. But I am gonna put oh, look at that. Let me uh, let me move things around so you can see what the heck's going on here. Now you can see things a little bit better. You can see the whole bottom of my head. Well, you know, that is what it is. All right, all right, all right, we'll fix it so you can see my face. Woo, I don't know why you want to see that, but anyway, this is the piece. Can't see my face anyway. <laughs> this is it. This was the gear that was just sitting in there. The gear goes on here, and just like any other speedometer gear, this goes in, fits in. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of lube around here. So that she'll slide in nicey nice. Of course, I'm looking at this thing going, oh, well, I guess it could push it down a little bit. But when I tighten this, it almost looks like that seal's gonna barely, barely be in there. But anyhow, let's go ahead and slide this in. What a battle, ba what a battle. There we go, that's better. All right, what a battle. But let's get this in there. Hopefully it won't leak, because I did chew on that other one pretty hard. But uh, man, it was stuck. But we'll put this in, hopefully it won't leak, and put the exhaust back on. Here's my new one. And this is, make sure this is clean. Everything feels good in there. Got a rag in my pocket. Uh oh, almost lost the gear. Don't want to get any real. There we go. Let's go ahead and slide that in there. Well, that's going to be a little bit of a dinger because that seal isn't going to want to go in easy. Maybe we can pull it in with the, the nut. I don't know if I'm going to need that spacer because they didn't give me a... Uh-oh, get my camera.
Jeepers, bro. Now I've got to clean this connector up too. We don't want to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting that in there and I'm just going to give her a little pushy pushy shovey shovey because we're right on the seal right now. <clears throat> As I tighten that up, I'm going to probably tighten that up by hand very, very gently. Yeah, I'm not going to put that in with the pneumatic, that's for sure. We're going to go get a regular ratchet. I'm going to pull it in with the with the bolt here. Just gently pop it in here. It looks like Looks like it's going. There we go. I'd say she's in. I don't know if I want to over tighten it. It's not very snug. Give it a little reassurance. There we go. Oh, there it goes. Felt the pop in there now. So that felt good. All right, I'm pretty confident that's good in there. I'm gonna go ahead and double check the snugness of this. All right. I'd say she ain't going nowhere. All right. Now, this came with this little pigtail, but I'm going to clean this, this out first because remember it had some junk in there. I've got some spray just for electrical connectors. And no, it's not brake cleaner. I don't know what a lot of these YouTuber guys, I don't know what their fascination with brake cleaner is, but I don't ever use brake cleaner. I'm not really sure why they do. This is, you know, you can see electromotive, electric part cleaner. <coughs> so we're just going to, ooh, jeepers, go. <coughs> jeepers. I was coughing before I sprayed it. That's weird. All right. Now I'm going to get some air, hit it with some air real quick, and get the wetness out of there. And then we'll plug it in. Nice and clean. Blew it, oh, I blew it off with the hose, but she's still a little bit. What the heck? Maybe we need to blow her off a little more. All right, <clears throat> now let's try it. All right. Plug her in. Make sure it latches. Tuck it up in there, because we're gonna put that heat shield back on. And <clears throat> Let's get the exhaust up in there. This is... Oh, I, don't, I kind of would like to have it go that way. Oh, yeah, there we go. Works. Might not stay up there, but we can put it up there for now. And then we're going to go ahead and put our exhaust back in, put my heat shield back in. In fact, I can probably... <clears throat> well, I don't know. Put the heat shield back in before. Well, I don't know. We'll just get the exhaust back up in there. Got everything back together. Now, before we take it off the lift, we want to check for leaks. So I'm going to jack it up. Um, let me rewind. I'm going to unjack it. <laughs> I'm going to bring it down, start her up, get back underneath it, jack it back up, get underneath it, check, make sure we don't have any leaks before we do much of anything. Didn't lose very much fluid, so I shouldn't have to add any. However, while I was in there, I did notice that the transmission fluid wasn't too pretty. So what that means is time for a transmission service. So good time to go buy a filter and buy some fluid. Well, I've got a five gallon bucket of fluid, but time to go buy a filter kit, pull the pan, change the filter, change the fluid. She's still running fine. The transmission is still shifting well. In fact, she shifts hard. Uh, but I don't want to take a chance of destroying this transmission by leaving this old nasty looking fluid in it. Now it may have, because it compromised that, like you saw inside when I was pulling on that thing, there was fluid inside of the connector. When I broke it in half, 
uh, with the screwdriver trying to pry it out of there, I broke it into two pieces because that's what they said the problem with the, the early model ones is that they have, they're made out of two pieces and they're just junk. And sure enough, there was fluid inside of that sensor. So I'm guessing that's probably not real good for it either. But this new one is all one piece. It's integrated. Uh, it fit right in there once I got the old piece out. But getting an old piece out was a humdinger, let me tell you. Uh, hopefully you won't have as much trouble as I did with that. But if you do, the exhaust was pretty easy to drop, I must admit. It was just take out the six bolts for the uh, for the manifolds and or headers, whatever you want to call them. They're kind of like half header, half manifold in this car. Uh, and they're still like a stock factory header, I guess you'd call it. But yeah, just they just bolt up like a manifold, though. They've got the little donut looking thing, half to half moon, whatever you want to call it. Take those six bolts out, boop, it dropped right down. I mean, literally almost all the way down. Uh, the other bracket we already took off, if you remember, we took off that one with the shield. That was the center bracket for the exhaust. So we'd already had that off anyway. So literally it was just hanging by the tailpipes. And I did put a, uh, a big you know, jack underneath that because I didn't want all that pressure leaning on those tailpipes. It was it was solid exhaust, but they're pushing up against the bottom of the car. And, you, know, you don't really want that. But anyhow, you drop the exhaust, it's not that big a deal if you, if you have to. I did have to get a pipe wrench on there. I was going to call it a monkey wrench. Back in the day, that's what we called them. I don't know why, because any monkey can use it. I don't know. But pipe wrench, and that pipe wrench did break it free. It just grabbed it, and boop, once it spun it, it was, you saw what happened. Well, after that, after I took the exhaust off, you could see it. <clears throat> so anyhow, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see if I can't, uh, see if there's any leaks. Hopefully not. And if there's no leaks, then we're going to take her for a drive. And hopefully this time, she won't... Uh, 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 right? Hopefully the speedometer is going to work right off the bat. Hopefully she's going to drive down the road like she's supposed to. That would be wonderful. But I'm probably not going to do a lot of driving with her, even so, just until I can get that transmission filter kit. They're not very expensive, 20 bucks or so, I'm thinking. Uh, and get that done because, yeah, she's, she's pretty... Pretty ugly. So let's see if we got any leaks and we'll go from there. No leaks that I can see. If they are, they're very, very tiny. Uh, so we're going to take it for a drive. Okay, we're snug as a bug in a rug. We're going to back her off of the lift. It's always a challenge to to set up the camera in this car or any car because I don't have a dash mount. I need to get one. But for now, you're just sitting in the seat just like you would if you were riding along with me. Oh, I should put my seatbelt on. She seems to be running okay. Seatbelt engaged. All right. Oh man, my window's really dirty. The sun hits the windshield on this thing because of the angle of this windshield. It is. I'm gonna turn around so I don't have to. I don't have to back out into the street just in case it decides to conk out. But I'm feeling confident. How about you all? Anybody else feeling confident? I'm feeling confident that we got it. Of course, the last video I watched about a guy who said that his car was, it started messing up. So let's hope this is not like that. Anyhow, I wish him luck with his new injection system. He knows who he is. If he ever watches this video. Ooh, okay. So, speedometer's not working. Oh my gosh. Maybe she's got to learn. But nope. I'm having the same problem. Yep. Nope, this one's not working at all. Well, I'll be dipped. I guess 
confidence just went right out the window. So I'm just gonna turn around right here. Golly, how can that be? The speedometer is not working. How can that not be? Or how can that be? I mean, this thing's worse than ever. Yep, speedometer's not working. Wow. This is horrible. Now what? Is the speedometer gear not turning? Is the... What is causing this? It threw the code. We replaced the sensor unless that late model sensor is just not compatible with this car. Golly, Sergeant Carter. What do we do now? Does it have to learn? Set it. Let's try that. Let's go ahead and unplug the battery and then we'll see what happens. Well, I still have no speedometer, but I've started and stopped the car a few times and it seems to be getting better. So maybe there's a learning curve. Uh, I've started it, I think, by starting it a few times. I think so many restarts and it does. It does funny things for computer control cars. But I can get it to launch now. So that was to the floor. She's still a little weak, but she's not spitting and sputtering. And if I try to rev her in place, she's revving. So let's go ahead and brave the outdoors. See if I can't see if it'll run go down the street it's still not no speedometer but we can work on that later as long as it's communicating with the car I think that will come so let's go ahead she's feeling a lot better now let's take her out on the open road I'm not gonna go far <laughs> it's dinner time and I'm hungry but at least if I can get this thing to go down the road nice nice I can finish this video otherwise <laughs> This video is to be continued. All right, let's put on the old seatbelt. Safety first, you know. So, there we go. And we're not gonna pussyfoot around. We're just gonna, well, we might wait till this car goes by though. And there's one up ahead, so, oh, and there's another one coming. Dang on it. Don't they know I'm trying to test drive a car? And there's no one else in this world but me that matters, right? Okay, maybe not. Let's start off easy at first. Uh oh. Nope. Yeah, that was good while it lasted. Nope. No, we ain't even gonna make it to go around the block. That's weird, it was doing good. But then it decided to undo good. <laughs> well, I thought we had it licked. Nope, not licked. It licked me. So, till I see that speedometer start working, I'm guessing I'm not gonna have it. She was revving, she was improving, but not, not good enough, I'm gonna say. the drawing board it seems like it's communicating because the running did improve but for whatever reason it is not still not reading that the car is moving I don't really understand that she's revving nice now and for short moment she's good but try start stop again oh back to running crappy again oh that didn't 
doesn't sound good. Back to running like a dog, dude. Well, back to the drawing board. We're going to have to do some studying up and see just what what, and why. Maybe retrofitting to the later model module wasn't the answer. So, back to the drawing board. What should have been a short video is now turning into a long video. I was hoping to just pull that little cover, you know, that heat shield off of the exhaust, pop that old one out, pop the new one in, plug it in, and everything was going to be good. But as you already know at this point, we have had to drop the exhaust, we had to about chisel the old one out of there, we finally got the new one in there, got the exhaust all hooked back up, only to meet with failure. So, welcome to the world of hot rodding and automotive in general. Uh, this reminds me of a particular, a couple of particular stories. I'll tell them to you quick because I don't want to waste a lot of your time yapping because I got a lot of work to do. But I had an MR2 years ago and I sold it. There's some videos on that if you go back. And I, it just was driving me crazy. I couldn't figure out what it was. Just Nothing I tried was working. I was throwing parts at it like crazy. And so I bring it to somebody that I thought knew more than me. Evidently, nobody knows more than me. I know. Hard to believe, right? I struggle with that myself. But truth of the matter is, you know, there, nobody seems to know more. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, and I don't know everything. I know that's hard to believe too. Yep, I struggle with that one too, but I don't know everything either, to be honest with you. I know. I feel you, but it's true. Anyway, I bring it to this guy. He tells me, charges me, I think 90 bucks or whatever, to tell me it needs a distributor. I'm like, don't touch it. I put a brand new one in like a week ago. It's one of the parts I threw at it. He goes, oh, that's a new one? I'm like, yeah. So don't touch it. I've got the old one, but putting the new one in didn't fix it. I'm going to put the old one back in. Let's see what happens. Well, you can guess, right? Nothing happened. Then I started retracing my steps. When I retraced my steps, I remembered after I got it running good, I put a new injector in it, and it actually was running great for a little while. And then I said, I decided I'm going to put some wires on it too, some new wires, because the ones on it were old. That's when the problem showed up. Not right away. Come to find out the coil wire in the wire kit when it was getting hot, once it warmed up, it was failing. I put a new coil wire on it, all better. Go figure, right? This guy wanted to charge me $600 for a new distributor. Not his fault. He read the scanner, the scanner said it's a spark problem, and there's numerous parts on that car that can cause a spark problem. So he just automatically figured needs a distributor. He probably tested the coil and tested the other stuff. It all tested good because that was all new too. So that was the last thing in line, right? We're, we're not any different here, okay? My poor neighbor is struggling with his diesel truck. He accidentally, while wiring something, shorted out his computer, and $600 later, he's got the same problem I got, still running like turd muffins. But anyway, this, we got to go back to square one. It's not anything I've done, because all I've done is take out an old part, put a new part in there. And I've not experienced any different problem at this point. So what's left? Let's let's kind of go back in our minds. What's what's going on? Okay, we've got a new we have a new part. So several things can be happening. Either the new part is junk, which is possible, and we'll go ahead and test on that, or the wiring from the part is junk. Right? We might have a break in the line somewhere where the signal's just not getting back to the old computer brain, you know what I mean? So there's two scenarios, either a defective part, which from what I understand, these are, they don't really go bad very often. The old one may, well, the old one was full of oil, so I don't know that it was any good, but evidently it wasn't the problem because we put a new one in, no better, unless the new one's faulty. Uh, I did think that the new one would... Uh, 
you know, maybe it had a learning process, and I did get it did start to run better, but it still won't go down the road. So that tells me, for whatever reason, that new part, that new speed sensor, is not detecting speed. Well, why not? Transmission's turning, right? Obviously, the car's moving. Not very well, but it's moving. So what, what else can there be? Now, when I took it out, you'll remember I showed you the little gear, right? And the gear looked good. So if the gear is good, okay, then what else could there be? Well, I could make believe I'm a genius, <laughs> and y'all probably figure that ain't true, but I'm smart enough to look things up, so I started searching the old web, and there's a lot of these C4s around, so somebody out there has experienced the same thing as me, right? Evidently, and you start looking for parts that are readily available, and you start to figure out what readily goes bad, right? Because stuff that never goes bad, you can't hardly buy the part. You cannot buy that speed sensor for this car. This is an updated version, okay? So the old version is almost impossible, and if you find them, they're expensive and they're used. And I don't like putting used parts on because that means I'm just going to have to go back and do what I'm doing again, and I don't really like getting stuck anywhere. So I like to put new stuff. If that, something goes bad, I like to replace it with new. I can't afford to restore a car from, you know, every nut and bolt from start to finish and make myself a brand new car. But what I can do is slowly make it new by replacing parts when they go bad. So I like to put new if I can. Anyway, there's one more part that is we're going to have to look at today. And the sad thing about it, I had an itch on your leg. Uh, the sad thing about it is everything I did yesterday, I got to do again. So I'm probably not going to show you that because I've already dropped the exhaust. I've already pulled the sensor out. I'm going to try to get this new one out without breaking it. Uh, and then once I get the sensor out, that's where things are going to get a little different. So I'm going to kind of probably just spare you all the whole repeat process. If this part is bad, this is what happens. There's a gear in there, the worm gear. Okay, you got the one I showed you that was on the speedometer sensor itself, the green one. And that fits into a worm gear that is on the shaft inside the transmission. What shaft? I don't know. I'm not giving you the shaft here, okay? So, now, you can probably look at that gear, and I'm going to, and it will probably look fine, from my understanding. What it is, is it's a gear that rides on the shaft, and it's probably, I'm guessing it's about a one-inch shaft or so. It's got a little clip. Who thought of that was a genius, right? It's got a clip on it, and that clip fits into a keyway. And that little clip on that plastic gear, it's probably nylon, is what holds it in place. Well, what happens if the little clip goes bling? What do you think happens to that gear? It just sits there, right? And when you start the engine, or you start to turn the transmission, and that gear, that shaft starts to turn, that little plastic gear is just going to sit there and the shaft is going to spin inside of it. So if if I'm correct, which I may not be because so far we've been disappointed greatly, then I'm probably going to need to replace that gear and or clip. You can buy them together so there's no sense in you got to take the tail shaft off the transmission to get to it. Yay! But it'll be a learning experience for you. My misery is your gain. So here we go. We're going to get started on that. Now, I could, if, I'm, if I can get a visual and it's actually the gear itself is stripped, I can't see how that gear could strip on the teeth-wise without stripping the one on the sensor. And there's not a lot of pressure on the sensor. So it's weird to me, like if it was the old mechanical style, I can understand that it just sitting there and letting the shaft spin. But this one has almost nothing on it. So you would think even if the clip wasn't in place, it'd spin a little, right? And it may be, it, but it, the speedometer is not registering anything. So I don't know if there's any kind of load on there. I don't know. Uh, it's an I don't know question, answer kind of thing. But that's where we're at now. I'm going to have to pull that sensor back out, the new one, and I'm going to get a mirror because I can't get my head in there. Just too fat a head, too small a tunnel to put it in. Try to get a good visual on what's going on inside there. See if I can see. It's evidently, from what I understand, it's a red gear which, you know, it's red. 
this when I get that far, if it does turn out to be that gear, I will try my best today to get the tail shaft off, kind of show you everything that's going on, and get that far today so that I can show you all where we're at. But at that point, it's parts time. we got to order parts again. And bugs. I hate bugs. Uh, so it'll be another weekend. We're going to have to wait for parts. But we'll finish this video up, and we'll just have to keep doing sequels. And hopefully this will be the last one. Yeah, right? I'm not the only one. I know a lot of you guys are experiencing the same kind of junk. Anytime you're dealing with computer-controlled cars, <sighs> yeah. <sighs> Whatever happened to the old carburetor? I had a gentleman comment. He goes, problem with that car is it's got no carburetor. He ain't lying. Carburetor, literally, the, the gremlin, we took it to that show, and it messed up. It, I hit a big bump and it just shut off. It just, <laughs> right, like that. And literally got out, tapped on the carburetor, fired it up, and it ran kind of crappy for a little while, but I was able to milk it, keep it running. And then after about a half a mile, cleared up, started running good again. Might have been a piece of crud, might have been a stuck float, I don't really know. But you can't go tapping on the throttle bodies on these things. You can't go, you know, kick on it, and it'll it'll start running good for you. Computers, you know, you can't hit them, and it starts working good. Like some of this old stuff, I got an old fan in here. They don't want to start up sometimes. You just kind of give it a little kick, and it'll start. You can't do that with computers. Evidently, you know, technology and violence don't get along well. Who figured? So anyway, that's what we're up against, and we're going to go ahead and start redoing everything we already did yesterday. I'm going to get as far as I can today. Hopefully, I will get to find out what the problem is. It could be the wiring. We're going to touch that out. I'm going to check the wiring first. I'm not going to air that because tracing a wire to see if there's a bare one somewhere, that's not going to be fun to watch, right? I wouldn't think so. If I'm wrong, let me know. Hey, they'll let us watch you chase a wire. Okay. Uh, I'm going to check the connectors, make sure everything's nothing's loose, and... Uh, you know, but my, I really think it's probably going to be that gear is stripped. They call it apple coring. So I guess that means, you know, the things inside, it's cored out, so it's just round inside. There's nothing connected. So it just sits there in, in place while everything else spins around it or under it and through it, whatever. So here we go. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to be working for probably an hour or so, and you won't know it. But once I get to that point, we'll turn the camera back on. And I'll let you all in on what's going on. Hopefully, prayerfully, we will find the problem. I will enlighten you with my great wisdom. No, not wisdom. Uh, my suffering. Right? My tenacity. Tenacity will win over intelligence any time. Because you just don't give up. Right? And trust me, I've done lots of stuff I should have gave up. But no. I persevered. I paid the price. Yeah, you, you'll eventually get it, but was it worth it? <laughs> but trust me, tenacity is the way to go when it comes to cars. Don't give up on them. I know it's frustrating. Uh, there are times you just want to roll it down a hill and set it on fire, right? I mean, I've had, I worked on a turbo Volkswagen for a friend of mine one time. He loved that car. I'm like, dude, roll it down a hill and burn it, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, but he loved it. So it is what it is. Uh, but don't do that, okay? These things, they're mechanical things. And it isn't that the car is a piece of junk. In most cases. It's, we just don't understand. And not understanding if something doesn't conform to our way of thinking doesn't mean it's junk or it's wrong. It just means we haven't figured it out yet. And when you finally figure it out, you'll be that much smarter. And if you're like me and you forget, you might want to write it down. <laughs> then you'll forget where you put the note. But yeah, anything like hooking up tachometers, I got a little note in with my wiring stuff, my little connectors, of how to hook up a tachometer. Because I forget. And I hook them up, you know, every few years, you know, build a new car. So it's not a bad idea to take notes. Pictures, YouTube! You can always YouTube it like I'm doing. Now this makes it a lot easier. I can just go back to one of my YouTube videos and kind of figure out everything I've done in the past. So woo! Gotta love YouTube! All right, enough talking. Let's get started, and I'll let you in on it as soon as I get that back down, stripped down to where we can look inside, 
and see exactly if we can figure it out. We'll figure it out eventually, one way or the other. I'm going to figure it out. So don't give up on me. I'm not going to give up until this car is fixed. In which case, you'll get to benefit from my suffering. Can't really see, but what was this? Oh, great. That's the little clippy thing I was telling you about. I don't think it's supposed to be just laying in there. So, I think we may have found our problem. And I don't really feel bad about... There's the gear, I think. I don't feel... Oh, it just spins. You just spin it by hand without anything else turning. I think we found our problem. Well, here's the big problem. Now I gotta pull the tail shaft off. And the tail shaft is connected to this little porky barry thingy that goes to the rear end. And that's all that's holding this transmission up. So, this is gonna be fun. Here, take the drive shaft out. Oop, you can't see that. Hang on. Come on. Minor adjustment. We're going to have to take... Nope, you still can't see it. Oh, you know. Well, you can. Nope. You can. Nope. What the heck? This thing. Right here. I mean, yeah, there's no way you can see it. But anyway, we're going to take the drive shaft out. We've got to take... There's a big torque bar right here, and this goes all the way to the rear end. And there's two big bolts, which you can't see, right? Right here. And I gotta take those out. I think there's two in the top, too, aren't they? Maybe not. Nope, there's not. Yay, good. Oh, 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 wait a minute. What? Oh, they go through the whole transmission up to the top. How stupid is that? Okay, well, anyway. But yeah, they're just big bolts that go right over all the way through and to here. And. I'll take that off, take the drive shaft out. I'm going to have to hold the transmission up with a transmission jack while I'm doing all this. Then we're going to take the tail shaft off because, because of this, this little tiny clippy thingy. But at least I know what I got to order now. But I want to try to get this since we got a little bit of time. I want to get that tail shaft off of there. And that way I can show you all exactly what's going on. Now, part of me is like, well, dang it, I didn't need to buy a speed sensor. But. You saw exactly what it took to get that speed sensor out. Now, that being said, I was going to have to take it out anyway. And I was going to have to replace it anyway because it came out in pieces. So, you know, anytime something comes out in pieces, yeah, maybe I could have put it back together, but nope, I don't think so. Uh, so, we had to buy the new one anyway. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't fix it. But uh, now we know at least partially what the problem is. Hopefully, there's not more damaged in there than I can already tell with. Because I can only see with the old fingertips. I can't, I can't see anything going on because it's kind of, as it goes in, it's kind of that away. And you, and it's, it's really weird. There's only a small opening. And maybe that's to limit fluid, I don't know. But there's only a small opening where the gear goes into and kind of like a starter. It's only got that small area that the starter goes and touches. And that's kind of the same thing. I probably got grease all over my face, but that's okay. But all right, let's get this tail shaft off of here. I gotta pull that big beam looking thing out of it. And I'm not really sure the design on this car is all that, but it does handle nice. So let's get started. Those were four of the tightest bolts I've ever had to deal with. But I've got this thing loose now. And I'm going to take it out of here, see if I can do it without... Oh, that's just wonderful. It doesn't want to come out. It's hitting the floorboard on that side. And let's see what we do on this side. Yeah, it don't want to come out. Oh, that's just... Wonderful. 
<sighs> How in the world are we supposed to get that out if it doesn't, if it won't move over far enough to come off? Well, that's just stupid. I mean, it's, it's as far off as it's going to go that way. About as far off as it's going to go that way. I may, I don't know, we're up here now. Let's see if I can show you where I'm at over here. All right. This thing won't. I gotta get the tail shaft off, and this thing's just in the way. So, I've got the transmission jacked up. I wonder if I let the transmission down a little. The distributor cap is like super close on these cars. If I drop that tranny much, it's going to gonna crush that distributor cap. So I'm gonna drop it just a little. I've got a little jack under the tranny here. I'm going to drop it down just a wee bit until I hear crunching. That's wrong. Man. I don't know if that's going to help or not. doesn't seem to be. If I need about an inch, I may have to see if I can pry the transmission over about an inch and see if we can get that to drop out of there. I could probably get the transmission out at this point. Let me see. Let's think about this diplomatically. Let me think on this for a minute. Got the drive shaft out. Now I'm going to try to get this thing out of here. It does not come out how I did it. So we may just leave it up in there. It's not doing anything, but I'm not really sure. Maybe i got to jack up the car to get it out. Or I'm not really sure, but I don't think I've got to let it come out. That is wedged up in there for sure. No, actually jacking up the car won't help. The rear end won't move. Maybe jacking up the transmission might help a little. We'll try it just to see if we can't get it out of there because I don't know. I mean, I've got it loose, but it's just not, not coming. So we're just going to leave it pushed back and leave it up in there. I, mean, I think we can take the, I think we can get this out of here without. Well, I'll take that off. So, let's go ahead and readjust everything and see if we can't get this tail shaft off of here. All right, here we go. Let's maybe we could zoom in on that a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm going to pull the four bolts that hold the tail shaft in. Nope, I thought I was going to pull four bolts that hold the tail shaft in. Oh, man. Oh. We have to, we may have to choose a different weapon. Now, the last one is going to be fun say the least. I may not be able to catch you. Well, you can't see it anyway, so I'm probably going to just get it without destroying the camera. So just hang tight. I'm going to get that last one up in the top here. Here we go. Cut the tail shaft off. Oh, there we go. Well, making a little bit of a mess. Get a bucket under here. All right, now I'm in uncharted territory. So I have never, ever taken a tail shaft off before. 
So, <laughs> I can't get it out of here. <laughs> it is, oh my goodness, this is insane. Okay, we're just going to leave it right there. But, look at this. That's probably why I wasn't working. So let's take this off of here. Man, I can't even... Oh, can you see that? Oh yeah, you can see that. I'm not even sure where that goes on there. It's just... Come off. Oh my goodness, she's on there. But it's nowhere near the hole. If you look at the hole on this, it's about here. I'm guessing it's supposed to go right there. And there's another notch there. But it's nowhere near that. So I'm going to wrestle with that. See if I can't get it off of there. It's got to go. It looks like maybe it went right here. I see a little score right there. But i got to try to get it off of here. and we'll... I'm going to have to stand where the camera is though. So I'll get it off and then we'll take a look at it. This is the hokiest setup I have ever, ever seen. This gear actually looks fine, and so does the clip. And from what I gather, it, the clip goes inside of here, like this. Okay? goes up in here. There's two little teeth right here. You see them? And then, of course, this piece. So it wraps around the gear, and the two teeth... We're grabbing there and then the fat part is there now this little nib here in the center goes into a hole there's two holes two tiny holes that are just big enough for this little nib to fit into so this little nib here is going to fit into a hole now there's two there's one dead step this is dead center and if you center this this is will be centered see it's in centered in here so you're looking at the middle of the gear. I set the middle of the gear on the shaft and the hole, the first hole that you come to when you, because there's two holes, one here, one here, you know, on the shaft, there's one further back than the other one. So the, the furthest back one is where I'm going to guess this goes. Here's the problem. This thing fits tight on that shaft. How am I supposed to get this over this? To where it can go like that you know uh, I'm assuming that you have to put this in first and then you got to try to get this somehow get over these teeth so it'll lock in but that just doesn't seem like it's gonna be very easy I'm gonna go try it now you're not gonna be able to see because I just don't have enough room up in there to do all of this but I will give you a play-by-play -play once I get it in there because this gear looks fine it's just somehow some way this little bugger maybe the other speed sensor locked up or something it doesn't seem to because here's the old piece you know and it seems okay so I don't know what happened why this came apart but we're gonna try to get it back in and I will let you know exactly how I got it back in if I get it back in if I can't well, that just, it kind of catches right there. If I can't, well, I'm going to have to go to the, my local transmission shop and ask him, how do I do this? But I'm going to try it right now and see what happens. It's getting late in the day. It's a Sunday. I like to have a little time to spend with the wife on Sunday. My daughter's working, so unfortunately I won't get to spend time with her. But I'm going to try to get this on now. And if not, I'll ask him come Monday. This is probably as far as we're going to go today anyway. I finally got it installed. I figured it out. There is enough room in the tunnel for these two little tabs. But when I looked at it installed, these tabs were barely, barely hanging on. So what I figured is this spring was getting weak. So what I did is I took me a screwdriver and I kind of kind of bent it and just kind of made the spring a little little more springy all right I could buy a new one but I don't think the new one you know it's gonna come with a, a more springy spring so I'm gonna go ahead and just make this spring make it happen and I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it I'm gonna try to get you up in here a little bit see the gear see it right there 
that's where it's supposed to be. But it wasn't. And I bent that clip so that it will be good and strong. I would do a fancy ending to this uh, particular video. But I still got a bunch of stuff I got to get finished before I can quit today. And my wife's cooking supper. And I've got, I'm not going to buy a new gear. I know, right? I just got finished preaching about that earlier, that always buy new stuff. That one was in great shape. I was able to bend the clip. The clip was worn, I think is what it was. But I bent that clip to where it's, she's in there tight now. So I think we're going to be okay as far as that's concerned. Hopefully the springiness in the clip will remain. If it happens again, at least I know what to do. But it wasn't easy. Uh, this is where I'm going to end it today. Now. I am going to finish putting this back together hopefully next week and I'm going to take it for a test drive. That hopefully will be a short video. Just basically button it back up and take it for a test drive. Not going to have time to do that today so this is going to be the end of the video. So this will be part two. So look for part three and or the sequel. Sequel? Sequel. Excuse me. Sequel? Sequel? Yeah, whatever. The sequel to this particular video, so the sequel to the C4 speedometer drama, or C4, I don't know, I'll figure out a fancy name for it. Anyway, things are not always as they appear. So even though it threw a code, and the code said it was the speedometer sensor, it was only partially right. It was, the speedometer sensor was not telling the car what to do. So that's correct. And when I put the new one in, so I think it was a two-fold problem because when I put the new one in, it did start to run okay at idle, but still wasn't reading anything. And it's funny because I thought maybe it was just spinning on the shaft, but in reality, it wasn't even there. The shaft's about yay long, and it's supposed to be in the middle of it, and it was like down here somewhere. So anyway, that was the problem, and uh, but we've got a nice new speedometer sensor in there now. Didn't technically have to spend any money on this particular repair, this part of the repair. But I was getting ready to put the tail shaft back on and something in my brain went burp, 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 burp. and the gremlin has taught me a valuable lesson. When you've got things apart, put in new seals. I'm still going to have to pull the engine out of the gremlin at some point and fix that rear main. I'm not looking forward to it, to be honest with you. It's kind of hoping I was done with that car and just enjoy it. But it's bad. I've got to fix it. So anyway, nonetheless, on this one, I was just getting ready to just pop it together. And I said, nope. By next week, I will have a new drive shaft seal, rear seal off for the drive shaft. Because I still have the uh, tail shaft disconnected. It's just sitting there right now, just so I can make sure everything lined up right. Because like I said, there's two holes. And I'm not sure which one to put it on. I'm still not 100% sure. Once I get this buttoned up, I'm going to go ahead and put the speedometer sensor in there. And if it fits you know, into the gears, then I know I'm good. I'm pretty sure I'm good. Because uh, it is dead center, and I would think that is where you'd want it. But I could be wrong. I might do a little research in the meantime just to make sure. Because there are two holes. I'm not really sure why. Uh, maybe for different gear ratio. I don't know. But anyhow... I'm going to go ahead and put a rear shaft seal in there because I'm trying to learn my lesson. What? What are they? Three, four bucks? So I'm going to order one, get it in. Next week, we'll put that in. We'll get the tail shaft back in. We'll get the drive shaft back in. We'll deal with that funky thing that goes from the drive shaft to the rear end. I don't know what they were thinking when they made that thing. But I guess it keeps everything... I don't even know because this rear end can't twist. It's all independent and the rear end is stationary. So I don't even know why it's there. But anyhow, weird, weird design. And I think after that, after this year's, they actually put a solid tube going from the engine to the rear end, from the transmission to the rear end. It was like all one, I mean, weird, weird setup in these Corvettes. But maybe it's so you don't get any flex, loss of I don't know. But anyhow, get off track. I got to do that. Oh. Uh, Let's, we'll get this back together next week, so please stay tuned for the finished product on this, and I will be so happy.
so very happy if it works good, <laughs> you know, because this has been a fiasco. At least I, we figured it out. If this doesn't do it, we will be very, very puzzled. But uh, at least I'm getting really, really good at dropping the exhaust on this car. <laughs> I got this done, you know, got the exhaust dropped pretty quick this time. Anyway, that's the end. I'm going to stop talking now. Do me a favor and subscribe. You all that subscribe are the reason why I do this. Y'all rock. My subscribers, I don't care what anybody says, my subscribers are the best subscribers of all time. That's just the way it is. Because they are so loyal. It's awesome. Uh, but, all right, enough on that. You guys rock. Girls and guys rock. Boys and girls. It's both. I actually have some women watching the, the channel. That's awesome. You ladies rock. I am very, very happy to have you join the channel, join the subscribes, my subscribers. Okay. So I do appreciate that. Uh, the gentlemen don't take that the wrong way. I am extremely happy that you're a member of my channel as well. So let's get this car finally fixed, and we'll get on to something else. But in the meantime, see ya.